so with a title like capitalist fragility you'd probably expect this video to be about how our system as a whole is very fragile how capitalism has contradictions within itself that inevitably lead to its collapse or that it's just not a stable system or maybe even talking about the instabilities of our society like that thing that happened at the nation's capital yesterday and that thing hasn't happened since fucking 1812 but no we're not talking about that because the thing about capitalism being unstable capitalism is just the ideology there's still people that have to do the the capitalism and it is upon those people um that things are very unstable now why do i just happen to bring this topic up right now these are things of course that a bunch of other bread tubers have been discussing for a long time what's my two cents have to do with anything well this is a bit in relation to some other discussions and um, some philosophies and psychology things. So to, to begin this a bit, I have been watching a YouTube channel called Invisible People for a while. Now, I don't know too much about the project they're running. I just look, I've been watching a lot of YouTube. Okay, depression, you stay in bed a lot. I have a laptop, you watch a lot of YouTube, right? So I, I've been watching this series of videos on this channel to give a little context. As I said, while I don't know too much about the project they're running, what this guy essentially does for this channel is he you know, goes around the country and he asks homeless people like, hey, you know, you're a blah, 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 and this is Los Angeles and you're homeless. Tell me about it. Some of these people have some amazing stories. Some of it's like the casual stuff, like, you know, don't assume things of people who are living on the streets, stuff like that. But it's interesting to see, to see the backgrounds of these people because you start to learn that for the past few decades that some of the most wild shit can allow people to become homeless. There was this one story of this woman. She happened to get on this accident on a bus that kind of screwed up her leg, basically made her disabled, made it really hard to walk because of nerve damage. And due to medical bills and lawyer fees and whatnot, well, and, and a lawyer that wanted to, wanted her to lie during a trial and that lawyer fucking her over. Yeah, she uh, was homeless for a while mostly because of a bus accident that is insanity that you can fuck up your leg on a bus and boom you're homeless in capitalism now of course to put things into perspective she's at least doing good now this channel every once in a while does updates on these people sometimes they die not too much later after these recordings sometimes they finally find shelter and have homes and apartments which is very sweet it's nice to see that but it's just shocking that somebody can go through an accident and they are homeless in this system um there are a lot of homeless people you'll see in these interviews that they they wish they had family they wish they had people to fall back on and even that in and of itself is kind of sad because you shouldn't require family to fall back on to not be homeless and a lot of these people i mean family was kind of the problem they had to leave home in their late teens sometimes they were just kicked out as soon as they became 18 and they were fucked there you know you shouldn't be dependent on family for stability that's terrible and it, it's kind of sad that these people wish they had that because that would have been their stability in the system either that or a government that of course doesn't want to support them and that sometimes comes up in these stories there are some other ones where people have lost their jobs during the recession there were a lot of videos on that channel for 2008 with one banker in particular talking about how he also became homeless for a moral reason but instead of deciding not to lie in court with a shitty lawyer uh this one banker decided during a recession that he didn't want to be a banker anymore because the firm was basically lying about the rates or whatever that these customers are going to get that they weren't really getting the full benefits of what was being advertised and he found that pretty immoral so he decided yeah you know homelessness and so this kind of ties into a few interesting philosophies first of all there is Kierkegaard and he kind of presents a philosophy that um there is a great anxiety in life because every decision you you have an infinite amount of decisions in this life and you have a very limited amount of time to make those decisions and the thing about making decisions in life is that they are permanent and they are all greatly important and it is this situation this dilemma that kind of causes a great anxiety especially in a lot of people and looking at this theory and then kind of presenting this in a juxtaposition with how unstable life in capitalism is wow words am i right um juxtaposing this with how unstable life in capitalism is it kind of brings to thought that maybe the true anxiety isn't entirely life you're always going to be presented with this anxiety but a lot like how i talk about the nature vs nurture argument where a lot of what comes from nature can be dialed around with how your environment reacts i would say it's kind of the same thing with these lifelong anxieties where you are always going to be presented with this anxiety decision problem that kierkegaard describes but i think the thing about it is is that your environment which happens 
happens to be capitalism, seems to really dial the anxiety of those choices to an 11 because you are in an environment that is actively hostile towards you. Um, not just as, as a worker, but I mean as a person, as somebody who deserves human rights. And when you have situations and people where insofar as you just have an abusive family or you just, just get in an accident on a bus or God forbid you're a... Um, a moral banker. Wow, I didn't think I'd ever be saying that in my entire life. You're kind of fucked. And and these aren't like major things. I think the well we have we have a lot of expectations of society. We have a lot of preconceived notions about how the world works. I actually talked about how one of those was shattered in my video on loot boxes and talking about how my mind was changed by Jim Serling and how my preconceived notion of whales in the gaming industry being a, a euphemism for rich people wasn't true. It was a euphemism for people with gambling addictions. But once again I have another preconceived notion that was again destroyed by this further education on how the world works and it's that people can be destroyed this easily and i mean on its own being able to go from having a reasonably normal american life which of course don't get me wrong is still shitty going from that and being straight up homeless pretty much over something as as little as the things i mentioned right that already presents its own anxiety but that adds on to the anxiety again of these life decisions that kierkegaard describes because now you have the intense anxiety of life decisions being important and being done in short periods of time uh, but now you know that you have to really hyper focus on these things these are decisions that, again, are as, as crazy as being moral or not being homeless. So that, that anxiety, as I said, is turned up to an 11 because you, you are now in an environment where really you're, you're kind of trying to step over shards of glass. You have to be intensely careful. I don't think this is just a nature of life, but uh, this exact anxiety, this, this exact amount of it is the cause of one's environment. Now, getting to that moral thing, I do actually put a bit of a stress on that whole moral point, right? That people chose moral over being comfortable within their lives and being housed and the rest of that. I had happened to had some conversations with people who seemed to make some very uh, naturalistic and Darwinistic arguments trying to say that just because we as homo sapiens were barbaric thousands of years ago that somehow we're the same today and that's the real reason that society's collapsing because it's like programmed in our genes and ah, you know, that kind of <laughs> conspiracy theory. But this, this all proves further Rutger Bregman's point. Now, this is a Dutch historian that is popular because he happened to really just give Tucker Carlson a shitty time on his own show, which was just awesome. I'll leave a link to that because that's a fun little clip, but uh, he's even more well known for being the guy who went to DeVos and said, yeah, no, climate change isn't just about using your cloth tote bags at Walmart. It's about paying your fucking taxes and maybe not going on a bunch of private jets to tell poorer people who don't contribute nearly as much to climate as you do that they need to use tote bags at Walmart. But he, he makes this other point that I think people really seem to shove away because it's more, and I really hate to say this about such a topic, more controversial. And it's that people are generally nicer than you think. And looking at these stories, looking at people who have become literally homeless because they would rather accept that than to be immoral, I would say this further drives by his point. It is the purpose of capitalist propaganda to make you think that your fellow worker is lazy or doesn't deserve their basic rights or that especially that they're harmful. You know, it's not just people selling security systems that want to make you think that your fellow comrade is a dangerous person who doesn't have morals, who is actually actually like an asshole or something. It is not just identity politics, but this basis right here of conflict that allows that top 1% to make sure that the power of the 99% is not conglomerated so they can actually fight up against the bourgeois in this world. I would say that it really keeps people from communalizing when they can't seem to accept internally that their fellow people are really nice and that they are willing to be moral and that they don't actually want to fight people over her you know so we have to be instilled to this belief that you know your comrades and that you or your fellow neighbor are dangerous people and there are some people where it's just you really you really can't fix this um as mark twain or i guess less famously known as, as samuel clemens said it is much easier to fool a person than to convince them that they have been fooled and i mean there are obviously a lot of different kinds of propaganda that you and i as as comrades and as people with left-leaning politics have to get through you know the people who have a very poor education on the history
history of the USSR, people who have been taught a very, very shitty definition of communism, and especially with this, have been taught to hate their fellow people. It is very hard to, to argue with these things. They've already been fooled by very well-structured propaganda in a system that really only teaches these people things not because they want a well-educated populace, but because they want to make sure that whatever education they get is their education. Because at the end of the day, what puts these people in power is just purely an ideology. It's a thought that we all practice. And they make sure that you have to believe in this because if you didn't, they wouldn't still have this ideology, this structure that keeps them in power, that keeps them in these lavish conditions while the rest of us suffer in this world. Their stability comes from our instability. I mean, you know, Jeff Bezos with his, and I kid you not, without the stats on this, you'd probably think I was bonkers, with his eight million dollars an hour is so far from falling on his ass it isn't even funny whereas we have people who are one or two missed paychecks from being on the streets and maybe even being interviewed by invisible people and i'm pretty sure you've already heard that point before that most of the proletariat need to stop defending billionaires because as i said they are much closer in paychecks to poverty and the people they keep demonizing for using welfare or whatever than the uh the people they so desperately want to appease the billionaires the thing is it, it isn't even paychecks anymore you can work a decent job and you can work your ass off you can do 50 60 hour weeks and you can have an accident on a bus you could be unfortunate enough to have diabetes things like that cancer right um, I've seen stories of people who have saved up just for dozens and dozens of years their entire lives and it's all wiped out in not even one or two years because of the cost of cancer treatment, right? These are conditions that you don't even really have a choice over sometimes. These are, are health conditions that you can be completely screwed over in your life that you can literally end up homeless over because of that instability. It doesn't even have to be you consciously choosing not to work insane amounts of hours. It can, you know, it doesn't even have to be you missing a paycheck. Sometimes it can just be things that most of the time, if not 99% of the time with these medical conditions you have like no control over these things just happen and you're screwed it's terrible that the life of the average American can be toppled over and these people can end up on the streets or skid row because of something as simple as something medical or just deciding that they don't want to be assholes in their society anymore that they want to decide to be moral I think those that make the Darwinist arguments and, and say that man is a cruel animal I'd like to point them to the fact that evolution never stopped happening and that at that point they're just making a bit of a religious argument people are still evolving it's more so mentally because that happens much faster than things on a physical level you can't look at these people and tell me that humans are not moral beings that you're really going to keep believing the propaganda that we are terrible people and that we're all out to get each other and that we're all greedy and individualist no these people chose morality and winning cases and being you know well-paid bankers they chose morality over those things there is something much greater than greed within the human condition, and it is empathy. And when the time comes, when the crumbling of our environment becomes a crash, I just hope that we have within ourselves the ability to summon this empathy.